This morning, my son and I are on a mission. We are headed to Goodwill and we are going to try to find some beautiful frames that we can upcycle and redo into a brand new look. This frame is such a good size that it's 11 by 14 and it was in the original packaging. I brought it home and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I once created a wreath using a picture frame and I loved the way it turned out and I wanted to create a different one, but similar. I'm gonna remove everything from it and then I'm gonna take a chippy brush and I'm just gonna dry brush some white chalk paint on it. This is just gonna brighten it up. I'm not looking to change the color. I still wanna have that original look, but just brighten it up just a little bit. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint in my chippy brush and then dry brush it. And once it was dry, I'm gonna seal it. We're gonna top coat it with this one. It's by rust -Oleum. it's clear. This is just gonna allow it to be sealed because it's gonna be a wreath. And if it's gonna be placed outdoors, I wanna make sure it's gonna stand the elements. We're gonna bring this pick. This one's from Walmart. It was about $3.45, really good deal. I think for the amount of flowers that you get in it, I think it was nice and I like the look of it. I like the color. So I'm gonna cut off all the picks in separate picks and then I'm gonna start stapling it to the bottom left corner of the frame. I'm gonna go pick by pick, making sure that I'm stapling it where it needs it. So just kind of play around with it. And just kind of make sure that you start with like one that has a bushy look just for as a base and then just keep adding as you go. And then once I was done stapling and I had the flowers where I wanted them, I want to cover all those staples up. So I'm going to take this burlap ribbon. It's very meshy, very threaded. And I'm just going to hot glue it and just wrap it around that corner, making sure that I am covering all the staples and staying around that corner side. I'm going to secure it in place with some hot glue. This is also going to give me a nice base so that we can hot glue some green flowers from Dollar Tree. Now you can leave it like this. I think it looks very beautiful just as is with the ribbon. But I do want to add a little bit of color. So I'm just going to take these green ones. Aren't they pretty? So vibrant. I'm just going to remove them from the stem. And I'm just going to hot glue them here and there until the entire corner is covered. All right. So keep in mind that you can do this for any season. This one's particularly for summer. But you can do this for fall. Wouldn't a fall one be beautiful? You can also do one for Christmas. Possibilities are endless. Even Easter, 4th of July. All of them. Love it. This next frame is such a good find. It's a pretty good size and it's solid wood, my friends. I grabbed it, I put it in my car and we are going to give it a brand new look. Recently, my sister-in-law was over and she saw my sunglass holder. So I created something like this several years ago for my own sunglasses because I needed somewhere to place them because I do have a little bit of an obsession with sunglasses. So she asked me to create one for her to place in her room. So this one is going to be for her. First thing I did was remove everything from it. I wiped it and cleaned it well. And then I gave it one pretty rough coat of Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the linen white. Now I am going to dry brush some of this blue. This is Serenity Blue by Rust-Oleum chalked paint. Again, I'm using a chippy brush, very small amount of paint in my brush, and just dry brushing it until I have a nice look to it. I'm going to sand it down once it was dry just to smooth everything out, wipe it well, and remove any dust. Then we're going to take these stencil. These are from Essential Stencil. They sent them to me a while back, and I'm just going to use one of these. I decided to go with the tulip, and I'm going to place some caulk right over it. I'm going to place it on the bottom right corner of the frame, and then using a scraper, I'm just going to apply it. Now, you can also stencil it with paint. But I wanted it to be a little bit raised, so I'm going to use caulk. And I've used this technique all the time in several of my projects, and I really love the way it looks. So I'm just going to leave it in real time here so you kind of see how I did it. I'm just going to keep spreading the caulk, removing any excess, and then once you peel it off, you'll be able to see the design. Again, you can do this with just paint, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more of a raised look. And I did the same thing on the other side on the upper left-hand corner. I did the same technique, and then once you lift it, you do have to let it dry a little bit, but it does dry pretty quickly. I'm going to dry brush some white paint, just very little paint, just to brighten up those flowers and make them pop. And then once they were dry, I'm just going to sand everything very, very lightly and make sure that it is smooth. We're going to bring some chicken wire. Now, I get my chicken wire from Amazon. 
I recently ran out of my crafting with chicken wire, so I reordered it. And I thought I ordered one that was similar. It was not. This one is actually more like real chicken wire, which is why I'm wearing gloves and being very, very careful. I cannot find that flexible one. It was such a good one to craft with. But nonetheless, we're going to make this one work. I'm using my wire cutters, and I'm just going to cut a piece that's going to fit right behind the frame because this is where we're going to hang the sunglasses from. Again, please use gloves because this is very prickly and it can poke you. All right, so once I had a piece that was large enough to cover the back, I'm just going to staple it in place. I'm using my electric stapler, which I got at Home Depot, but you can certainly use a manual one if you do, but I suggest one that is pretty heavy duty. Once I had it secure in place, I am going to dry brush some white paint on it. I did this to mine as well. It really held up and it's just going to brighten up that chicken wire so it doesn't look so dark. And a little bit of paint goes a long way. Just add it to your paintbrush and just dry brush away and just let it air dry. It really dries quickly. Then it's time to just cover up those wires in the back. You don't want the wall to be scratched up and you definitely don't want fingers to be poked. So we are going to cut off one inch strips of this black stock paper and we're going to hot glue it and staple it to the back, making sure we are covering all those prickly parts. Friends, I would love to connect with you on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. And I have those links down below in the description box. So when you're done watching, make sure you go check them out and connect with me there as well. I'm going to give it one last quick, very light sand just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And then that's it. Because the frame already had a little hook in the back, we didn't need to attach one. But look how cute this looks. You can do this in any color. You can add any design you want. It would be a perfect gift for someone. This next frame is one of my favorites. It had such character. It's solid wood as well. It is thin, but it is wood. And I love the design that it had, very rustic. It's a little too orangey for me, so I'm just gonna brighten it up with some white paint. You don't have to, but this is just what I prefer. I'm gonna dry brush it, but this one's gonna be a pretty heavy dry brush. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint and just build up as I need. And I'm gonna do that on all sides of the frame. I want to keep a side to side motion with my brush strokes that way it's going to keep the design that already has but it was not needed and again i'm just going to leave it nice and distressed for a rustic look i build up the paint as needed so i just added one extra coat very light right on top again just to brighten it up and add as much that I needed. But if you ever recreate something like this, you can always just give it a heavy coat and just have full coverage. It's okay, it's whatever you want. I'm gonna sand it down just a little bit to remove some of those lines from the brush strokes, wipe it really well, and then we're gonna bring in a cute little wreath form. I got this a while back and I just want to remove everything from it. And then I'm gonna use some of this white jute string and I'm just going to tie it one in each side, one on top, one the bottom, and one on each side. This is going to help me attach it to the center opening of the frame. I'm gonna flip over the frame and we're gonna place the wreath form right in the center. Then the strings, we're just going to staple them onto the frame. Here's the thing, you just wanna make sure you keep that wreath right in the center, tug and pull as you need, but you don't have to tug it so hard because it's not heavy. Even if you are using wreaths for different seasons, just attach it like this. It works really well. So I'm just going to use my staples. And again, I'm just going to attach here the last side. Then we're just going to cut off the excess string once everything was nicely attached. If you need to use the hammer to tighten those staples, you certainly can. I'm going to straighten out the wreath and just kind of form it as needed. And that's it. Look how pretty this looks. Isn't it gorgeous? So fresh, so rustic, but yet chic. I love it. This next frame is a beauty. It's a little outdated, but look at that frame. It's solid wood. The wood tone is gorgeous. 
I knew I wanted to do something with it. So we are going to give it a new look, but we're going to keep that frame just like it is, my friends. I love it so much. I am not even going to paint it. We are going to remove the center though, but we're going to reuse it. So I'm just going to move the clips out the way. I'm going to use my screwdriver. We're going to remove the center and then simply we're just going to add a covering on it because we do want to paint it now this design i'm just going to use some of this double-sided tape you can hot glue it if you want you can use adhesive glue whatever you have i'm just going to use the double-sided tape make it quick and simple i'm going to cut off the excess this is just more of that black stock paper and then we're going to give it two coats of waverly chalk band in the white friends i know that you love watching video tutorials but if you love reading blogs of diy crafts i do have my blog which i post every single week so make sure you check it out it is linked down below all right we're going to use another stencil from essential stencil this one is a beautiful scripture it says he left the 99 to rescue me and i'm just going to stencil it using waverly chalk paint and the ink which is just a black tone and i'm just going to do this circular motion to stencil it it works really well just make sure you don't add a lot of paint onto your brush There's the reveal and now we're just going to place it right back on the frame. We're going to tighten those clips, which are actually pretty secure. They're not my favorite clips, but I do like that you can use them with any center. And then we're going to place some of these sawtooth hooks on the back, which I get on my Amazon. And they are in my Amazon store, which is linked below. But look how beautiful this turned out. So simple, so rustic. I'm going to keep this one because it's one of my favorites. But I would love to know which one is your favorite. I can never pick, but I think I like this one. And I like them all. I can't say. But here's another video for you to watch. Click on it. Way more inspiration for frames. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.